We've got four amazing best of fives ahead of us tonight. And we're going to kick things off with a match that I'm honestly very, very excited for. Upper 3 Zelda, or just Upper 3, versus Blood Milan. Some good old 5.1, 5.2k action. I think it's the first time in a long time that these dudes are playing for 60 bucks. Winner gets 60, loser gets 15. So just for being here and playing a couple of games. It's going to be fun. These two should be incredibly evenly matched. And I have genuinely no idea who wins. It's obviously not the highest level of StarCraft. But I think if there is one thing that we have learned on this channel over the last 12 or 24 months is... It doesn't need to be the highest level of StarCraft to be very entertaining. I'm excited for this one. I'm going to have some fun with it. And I hope you guys will enjoy it too. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Round one, fight. In the top right side of Data C is our opening match of the night and the opening best of five of the night. We are looking at the main base of a German Protoss that I started casting when he was 3,700 MMR. And we watched a couple of games for fun, but it was pretty obvious that this kiddo took it very serious and he wanted to get better. He kept playing, kept playing, and now he has kind of all grown up. He's 5,100 MMR. He's still getting better. He loves Showtime. Met him at Home Story Cup, a really sweet German dude. This is Blood Milan. Woohoo! Uh, he's nervous apparently and he has also been preparing builds now i don't know what that means guys but we will figure it out and in the bottom left side we're looking at the main base of everyone's favorite he loves politics he loves canada and loves his wife so much that he's willing to move to the uk and on top of that he is a fantastic streamer a sweet human who has also helped almost everyone out in the stock of two scene with optimizing their stream this is upper three previously known as upper three zelda we can also call him our pal Cell. I think he loves Canada. Now I'm gonna have some fun with this series guys. So don't take everything I say too serious. And on top of that it's also very hard for me to analyze these games. Because whenever Cell does a build. It kind of looks like something but then it's not quite that. And it's something completely else. A lot of things <laughs> just show up a little bit later than they are supposed to. And I also feel that Cell is the only Terran in the world that does not truly respect Battery Overcharge. I've had a, a couple of instances against him. I think we all remember Upper 3 against Max Pax. The man does not believe in the green battery. And it does sometimes come back to hunt him in the butt. Nice Reaper movement though by our pal Cell as he draws for his blood very quickly. First blood. It's obviously a solid start for him. Whenever he plays against me, it's been a lot of Reaper, Reaper, Heli and Heli and then nothing. <laughs> Which is very weird. It's supposed to be Reaper, Reaper, Heli and Heli and into, you know, something terrifying. But most of the time, it's just kind of that. You've never seen Gabe at the BBB? Gabe was the main event of the very first Big Brain Bouts. He 3 0 Showtime in uh, 20 minutes. And then I was like, man, I'm never inviting Gabe again. Gabe's too good. He's, he's simply too big for an event like this. We need fun, close, competitive matches. Not Gabe destroying everyone. Where I live, Blood Milan is a huge legend. Do you live in the Ruddy stream, mate? Because he is a huge legend over here as well. The last thing that I heard from Cell stream before he closed the chat... Saying that he was just going to go ahead and lose against this Protoss. I do not believe that Cell thinks he's going to lose. I think deep down inside, he believes he can win. This is good multitasking. That's two workers going down. What's up with the Hellion? The Hellion is not doing anything, but it's going to make it into the main base. That's three. Cell! Oh my goodness. Uh, no quad kill, but... Well, that's a decent amount of workers, guys. So we don't mind follow-up. That does make me wonder... Are we also going to get an armory? I never quite know with Cell. Sometimes it looks like the armory, but then it's not an armory build. He actually had a really good start against me on Data C, where he just kind of put the mines defensively. They connected with a couple phoenixes. And basically everything went good for him. Seems that that is not going to be the case this time around. He will pick up these two meta Wither Mines, put them in the Metavac, and fly it to the other side of the map. 
Meanwhile, Blood Milan is just kind of casually scouting. Wondering if it's safe to go up to three bases. And it is. Yeah, that should be uh, my new YouTube video. Seven of the best pro gamers in the world against Gabe alone. Gabe is going to win. I'm going to end up with 12 million views. It's going to be great. Gabe will just take them all out in four minutes. <laughs> 28 minute game for Gabe. Let's not give Goblin any ideas now, guys. It's gonna be his next video. <laughs> Ooh, the Stalkers were sleeping on the job a little bit, but in the end, Blood Milan does pay attention. He goes for the Medivac first, which I don't hate. But now you do need to make sure that this does not go on for too long. The first Riddle Mine didn't get a whole lot. Can he get the second one? Yes, he does. Good defense, obviously, guys. I would say this is a win. But this is not as big of a win as you may think. Where it's like, oh, he only killed one probe. He lost two Widow Mines and a Medivac. It's terrible. Nah. That was like all 22 probes, not mining. So if you take a look at the graph. It's honestly, it wasn't so bad for Cell. It's never a good feeling as a Terran player to lose your Medivac immediately. And yeah, it obviously cannot go on for a long time. You ideally want to keep that thing around a little bit longer, but... It still did some damage, and I think it will still open a window of opportunity for his next push to be very strong. Saro will still play Iliscarius. Saro is going to play against the winner of Rainer versus uh, Hero that is currently going on. And if that is going on and you guys are watching it, please let me know. I'm obviously emotionally invested in that game too. So much StarCraft, guys. We knew it was going to be a StarCraft pack weekend. It definitely is. I wonder if Op3 has the idea of just ending game one with his first push. Or the moment he moves out he's going to drop a third command center. And this will be a macro game. At this point it's really hard for me to tell. Like this push has a lot of potential. Stim, combat shield. I think Blood Milan is going to have like two, maybe three colossus. But if four tanks siege up in a good spot. Oh really Fiant? That's bad. Hero takes game one. What kind of an opening was it? It was waterfall, right? Hmm. Just straight up glaives. Did Rainer defend with uh, Banelings or with Roaches? Roaches. Well, now it's time for Reyna to do the ultimate Reyna thing. And then it's been a bunch of games in a row when your tournament life is on the line. We'll talk more about that soon. Now we're going to talk about my pal Cell, who's moving out. He is dropping a third CC. So this is not an ultra all-in, but I think we can all agree that this push needs to do a lot of damage. Blood Milan is doing everything that the Protoss is supposed to do. Oh, uh, besides the sentry here. What is the sentry doing? You don't want to lose the sentry, mate. I think Cell sees it. Cell wants it. Cell chases it. And Cell always gets what he wants. There is another sentry, but that one does not have energy for Guardian Shield. This fight is important. Matrix to Colossus then. Cell, what are we doing? Cell, you need to make, you make up your mind. He does drop a Matrix. But there are still two more Colossus. I don't think you can chase like this, Cell. You need to start sieging up your tanks, mate. Lost a lot of bio units there, guys. It is five tanks, though. This is actually very sick. Is charge done? Charge is done. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna try to throw down a little bounty. We do still have one more Matrix, but I think at this point, maybe an anti-armor missile is actually better than Matrix. And I very rarely think so. But if you have five tanks and a bunch of buy units here, maybe the anti-armor missile is doable. Cuckoo says that he thinks so is that. It really depends on how well this fight goes. He goes for a uh, Matrix. I think it's not a bad choice. In the end, the Cell is completely melt. Good micro on the buy units here by my pal Cell. Lost one tank, but still four tanks remaining. Blood Milan has a lot of gas. Templar Archives is almost done. What is this? A double drop? Who is this guy? Cell. He's more... Oh, no. He doesn't believe in the battery. We all know he doesn't believe in the battery. Cell, when do, <laughs> why do you always do this? <laughs> You've got four tanks and he runs away from the tanks. The double drop idea was actually pretty sick, man. But... Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Trigger. 
Okay, like this is going on so long right now that I feel like they're both floating a lot. Cell throws a <laughs> tank! Why is there a tank in the medevac? Cell's a mad lad. The only time in the world that drops with tanks. Does save it for now? Could save it, does save it. This has been going on for so long that the Raven has energy again for a matrix. If you look at the left side of our screen, oh baby! Reinforcements have arrived. Okay, well that's a lot of zealots. I actually think that's too many zealots, right? Yeah, that's a few too many zealots. A matrix. Well, is it too many zealots though? No. Bayon is doing pretty good. These marauders trying to do whatever they can. So with a little bit of red alert micro. Let the tank roll over the zealots then. In the end, Blood Milan does clean all of this up. It obviously costed him a lot. And it did allow our Canadian Terran to go up to three bases. Twelve workers behind is not that bad. Uh, it's only plus one as well, right, for a German proto, so I think it's still pretty even. I already think this is a great series, guys. I knew that this is what the world needed. Upper three versus Blood Milan. <laughs> 75 bucks for the opening best of five of the night, 60 for the winner, 15 for the loser. As upper three drops the second starport. When it comes to the strategy, I don't think you guys need me too much. This is all pretty straightforward uh, Protoss play and Terran play. I think we have one High Templar too many. Never warp in an uneven amount of High Templars. As Cell feels there is a little opening. There isn't. You look at the minimap, guys. Our pal Cell. He's ready for some double Liberator arrest. Straight out of Vindicta's playbook, I would say. And trying to clean this up with Archons is... I mean, I guess it works. Not the most efficient thing I've ever seen, but it will work. So now loads up four Metavax. He's going to unload everything in the main base. Now you can also bring in the other two units and the tank. There is still the tank in that low HP Metavax. The man unloads the tanks, gets a lot of workers already. The stalkers are stuck. A couple of Zealots are running in one by one. Where are the Colossus where you need them the most? And this is where Arkham's really suck. 19 probes just went down. That's a lot. Wow, that's so many probes. Obviously a lot of probes died in the in the main base, but I didn't see 26 dying. Jeez Louise, that's a lot. How many kills on the Raven? Only four. Were they just misrallied here or something? I don't know what happened. Metavax come back for round two. Blood Milan still struggling a little. This is obviously what people struggle with in general if they do not play Stargate. You don't have Phoenixes to just chip away at these Metavax. So these units can chill there forever. And even though the German Proto sees it, you can't really do too much about it. Upgrades are a little bit underwhelming on both sides, I want to say. A little while ago, guys, I was watching a Max Packs game just an hour ago. And 12 minutes and 40 seconds into the game, Max Packs had plus 2 ground and plus 3 air weapons. Blood Milan has plus 1 ground. Upper 3 has plus 1. And plus 1 armor now. Not quite on the same skill as the other upgrades I just mentioned, but we are getting somewhere. 180 supply against 175. I think Sao is winning. I feel that Sao has done a lot of things right. But I also think on this level, if they max out, the Protoss army could be better than the Terran. That's a lot of Archons though. I mean, is Sao gonna pull a Cuckoo? Will he miss EMPs? The first EMP lands, all the EMP lands, and these Archons are all so damn low in HP. And I think as soon as the front units are gone, these Colossus are sitting ducks, and Sao comes in from the right side as well. It is a flank on the Colossus. Each and every single Colossus goes down. No, one Colossus actually survives. I don't know how that happened. I feel like he could have killed it. We do land a few more EMPs. These Archons are super low on HP. Now we just need a couple of extra buy units to deal with these final few Zealots. Ghost Manifact SCV is pretty good against Zealots too. As long as that Colossus doesn't hel help out. Man, this is actually still really close. The Colossus is getting really good shots of at this point. We have three Liberators on the way. We're going to wipe in a couple of extra high Templars. Once more, uneven amount. Stop doing that. It hurts. We have a tank now. A tank is good. Cell just needs to make sure that his Marines are protected against the Colossus shots. If he can do that, he's fine. Because this Protoss army is honestly not that great. The Ghost Count is now only one, though. We do still have a Raven, but it's not here. Blood Milan is going for the tank. Archons are doing their thing. But I gotta say, that tank is tanking. That tank was a tanky boy. And definitely bought a lot of time for all the bio units to do their thing. This game is close. I still gotta believe it. No spoiler alerts. 
Oh, there is no spoiler. I did not see uh, game one, no. I've seen the other games. Please let me know what's happening in game two, though. So is pushing Blood Milan back. A couple of Zealots getting picked off. Blood Milan did make it now all the way up to plus two. And he's even getting a fifth base. As Cell is going to siege up uh, this base at 12 o'clock with a cheeky Liberator. A few more workers will fall. I think that our pal Cell has killed 40 workers at this point. 43. 44. Lewis Hamilton. Pretty good. 44 probes in a 15 minute game. No. Oh, these are some low HP medivacs, amigo. These are some low HP medivacs. I hope you're sure about this, Cell. Cell is sure about it, and he's going for a big invasion with Liberators, and it seems like he's going to get away with it. That is a shit ton of Terran units in the main base of the Protoss. Battery Overcharge won't save you this time around. And this could very well be the drop that's going to end the game. It felt questionable, it felt risky, but this is a beautiful setup by Cell. Actually, very well done. Very, very well done by our Canadian Terran. The tanks are getting some good shots up. Nice EMPs again. He's not pulling any cuckoos here. And it's so difficult to engage this. You cannot ignore it because then you lose your entire main base. But it's so damn difficult to engage this. The medivacs were low in HP. But that did not stop our Canadian Terran to just go for it. He sent it. And he gets rewarded. A 16 minute game one between these two. More Liberator Harass. Ah, this is very well played. Super fun game, very back and forth. Very, very fun game one. Disruptor gets picked off. Final Nova is not going to make the difference. More units being rallied to the other side of the map right now. Sells an animal. Maru, who? It's all about up a tree, baby. Oh, come on. Let these Widow Mines fire. Why don't we see those Widow Mines fire? GG gets called. And Cell takes the 1 0 lead. In what honestly was an excellent game between these two. Uh, that was some good matchmaking, I think, guys. It's only the first game. Obviously, we don't know what happens in the rest of the best of five, but that uh, that makes me hungry for a whole lot more. Game two is going to be played on Moondance. So we're going to go ahead and host Moondance. Mm -mm. We have Ravi with the 300 bits saying, sell Yang control of this game like a Republican. <laughs> in the florida 15th <laughs> i'm not even sure if i get an entire sentence but i kind of know what that means well really all right i will just go ahead and fire up this game and then i'll take actually i cannot open that on my phone mm. Mm -mm. i'm just enjoying my coffee blood meal on is ready for game two Hmm. Yeah, there is a, a lot of soccer action. I think Vardy is also running one of his events, but hey. Don't think we can complain about it, guys. I think we can all complain when the only thing you can watch is my mediocre ladder games. And you're like, damn, there's just nothing good happening, is there? But it's over to zero, damn. That's, uh, that's rough, guys. There is uh, no other way to put it. And that is rough. Well, enough about that tournament. I'm done with it. Let's go ahead and enjoy game two between these two community legends, community heroes, or at least legends for me. I uh, Maybe not exactly throughout the entire scene. Not everyone is going to be familiar with these guys, but I am, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm having a lot of fun. Round two, fight! In the top left side of Moondance, we are looking at the main base of our German Protoss. Had a pretty good setup in game one, and I thought he dealt all right with the first push. It's really just the drops in the main base that made the tie turn. Can he turn things around? He was ready for this, he was excited. He has prepared some builds. This is Blood Milan. 5100 MMR. Oh, 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 what is, oh, oh, oh my god, he's doing it. That's disgusting. That is the least Canadian thing that I've ever seen. In the bottom right side of Moondance, we're looking at the main base of a man that many of us identify as our pal Cell. But who the hell do this in a community broadcasted fun show match, best of five? It's up a three. And the boys are no longer at home. I think he calls this the Dolan. Dolan does do it every now and then. He's done, he's done this against me as well. Four racks. Wait, no, three racks. 
I was about to say. I feel like you have no money for four. This is not very Canadian. This is not very Canadian at all. I like how Sal can find inspiration from almost anyone. Gets private coaching from Juanito. Ends up doing Dolan builds. <laughs> That's like going to the Porsche dealership. Going for a test drive in the 911. But then in the end, you're like, you know what? I'll take the Ford Fiesta anyway. That's what I enjoy. <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I love Dolan. Don't get me wrong. But if you have Juanito, Dolan, you know. I think we can all agree that Juanito is perhaps the right guy to get some inspiration off. Blood being on those feel that something ain't quite right. It's obviously always a little sus, as the boomers and zoomers would say. Only the zoomers, actually. I don't think the boomers say that. You're like, is he doing something? Is there a factory out on the map? Is it going to be cl very quick? Cloak with him. Now he saw the boys. If he's paying attention. Was he paying attention? I don't think he saw it. Now he sees it, but he shades straight into it. You need batteries, guys. I think the ideal defense here is double battery, double pylon. You cannot only have one pylon, because if you only have one pylon, you're going to be in trouble. You don't want to fight with only one adept either. Man, this is very hard to hold. Like, I always hold this with stalkers. So don't even ask me what you are supposed to do here. But I don't think that this is the fight that Blood Milan is looking for. You really cannot lose an adept, that's for sure. Well, maybe it's not so bad. The adept is getting a lot of shots off. Both adept still alive. Both adept still alive. One of the adepts died. One of the adepts died. We do use battery overcharge. And Cell, for the first time in his life, is actually respecting the battery overcharge. But he does need more, though, guys. Cell needs a lot more than he's getting so far. And it might just be an easy hold for Blood Milan in the end. Unless I'm crazy, but... I mean, I am a little bit crazy, but I can't be that crazy. Yeah, I mean, one battery going down. I think the Stalker should one-shot a couple of the SCVs. That makes your life a little bit easier. Don't lose your adapt for nothing. Don't get surrounded. I think Blood Milan holds. I always feel that Cell attacks with, like, three Marines, guys. I feel that he doesn't have the right amount of Marines trigger. I think he goes too early. GG gets called. It feels that he barely has any Marines when he shows up in the main. Yeah, it was a pretty easy hold in the end. GG gets called. That's where you get Canada. That's why you gotta be honorable. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've seen Cell do this three times now. And I don't think it worked. <laughs> In any of those three attempts. Well, that means we're all tied up. And that means that the first best of five of the night is not a 3-0. And that means that I've already done my job. And now uh, made a better man win. That is kind of the, the story for every best of five, guys. When I'm doing the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. I only have one mission. And that is not give you guys any 3-0s. As long as I do that, I feel like I have succeeded. No matter how good or bad the games may be. Obviously, game two, not ultra exciting. Game 1, though, was excellent. We'll see what Game 3 has. I want to say in store for us. But we can also do something else. What Game 3 will bring to the table. Much like a Republican in California 3rd. Cell didn't stand a chance that game. But why the 3rd, Ravi? And why the 15th? Are those like districts? Or is that when they have a... Is that the date of the elections? The local elections? Those are districts. Uh huh. All right. All right. Round three. Fight. In the bottom right side, uh, bottom left side, excuse me, of Tropical Sacrifice, we are looking at the main base of our Canadian Terran player, our pal Cell. Won the macro game, lost the cheesy game. Let's see what Cell wants to do in game three. In the top right side, we're looking at the main base of the man who held the Marine SCV all in with adapts. And I find that impressive, guys. He even lost one adept right before the battery was done, but still felt like a relatively easy hold. 5,100 MMR, German Protoss player who absolutely loves Mr. Maurer. He is a little Mr. Maurer himself. This is Blood Milan. I know a decent amount about uh, American politics. Not everything, but I know a decent amount. But I didn't really understand the 3rd and the 15th. Because, like, why would it be specific to those districts? Is the third district in California, what is that? Is that, like, L.A.? Or what is the third district? It's Ravi, slowly. 
He said the 15th district for Florida and the third district for California. Like I obviously don't really know where the districts are, but I know a decent amount about the American politics. So once more goes for a wall off. So he's gonna keep Lot Milan in the dark, but this time around he's not doing anything as wild as he did in the previous game. I think the idea here is to obviously scare your opponent a little bit. Like imagine if Blood Milan would panic and he would cancel his nexus, that would also be kind of bad for the German Protoss. But Blood Milan held in the previous game without losing the nexus, so I don't think he's going to do that. The third district is Sacramento San Fran. Yeah. No, it's indeed very unlikely that a Republican would win that. <laughs> <laughs> So we have factory and a command center as a follow-up here for upper tree. This all seems relatively normal. Uh, well, I've seen upper tree do a lot of the double reaper into double hellion, and I don't hate that. But then the idea is to do a little more. I was like, what do I hear? But it's the coffee machine suddenly going well. And the one thing that makes me a bit sad whenever I watch so is that it's he slows himself down a decent amount by doing this kind of stuff, and everything is maybe not as tight as it could be. But then he also doesn't really have any real firepower. So it almost feels that he's playing the game on hard mode. I think the defensive mines, if that is what he is going to do, then, then that might not be so bad. Because there is a good chance that a random mine can connect with an oracle if the oracle is forced to defend at home first. But okay, we've done a little swap -a so it seems that Cell wants to just go for a very quick Hellion drop. Starport is obviously not ultra close to the main base of the Protoss. And this is actually a really good scout by uh, Blood Milan. This should kind of give you a very good idea of what you're up against. The Reaper is... Oh, Marauders too? Cell! Okay, Cell is going a little crazy. These builds are very good as long as the Protoss doesn't build a shield battery. If the Protoss does build a shield battery, it gets a little worse. It's it's going to be very hit or miss, guys. Like uh, It's hard for me to really say how this is going to go. It comes down to execution. If you ask me whose spot do I prefer at the moment, I would say Blood Milan. But if he doesn't build a battery in the next 20 seconds, I think I prefer Cell's position. It's also Oracle into Phoenix, which I don't know if that really helps you here. Well, Blood Milan is clearly not thinking about any defense. He's going to send the Oracle to the other side of the map. He's afraid. Will he go for it? He seems a bit afraid. He's hesitant, but in the end, he does go for it. And Alpha 3 has absolutely zero anti-air in place. Does have two Marines coming over. It's only four SCVs, though. I honestly thought that that was going to be a bit worse. You guys want to play the guessing game? How many probes will Cell kill before minute five? Uh, not before minute five. Before 5.30. Well, the Phoenix is not doing anything. I think that Cell should be able to get eight to nine workers very convincingly here. And maybe even a little bit more than that. Here come the aliens. That's four workers going down immediately. Make it six, make it seven, make it nine. Double shot, nice. And nine it is in the end. I said eight to nine, so that was a pretty good guess. Hello, Ty Cage. Good guess by you as well, amigo. <laughs> charge so it does seem that blood Milan is worried about the follow-up push here maybe he has the idea that upper tree will immediately follow this up with another push even before any of the big upgrades come into play or he just wants to play some phoenix zealot that actually makes a lot of sense as well yeah i don't hate that it's always a bit weird for me to see oracle into phoenix into zealot but technically that's perfectly normal yeah, i actually really like this for blood Milan now guys the man who was down 0-1 in this best of five and lost the macro game on Data C. I have the feeling that Cell threw away his momentum a little bit with that silly Marine all in in game two. He should have waited. I think if Cell would have waited in game two until he has like four or five extra Marines, then it's so much harder for these adapts to get like any amount of shots off because every single time they get in range of the Marines, they eat like eight shots at once. 
This honestly looks pretty rough for upper tree. What should Blood Milan do from a spot like this? Just kind of keep building probes. You can drop a robo, get an observer out. But it's mostly just about building probes. Make sure you have a, a decent amount of gateways. He's going from 2 to 6. I like that. I personally think you can go up to 8 relatively quick. Don't even make too many units. Just go up to 8 gateways. Like he still has the Oracle too, no? Yeah. Even has a stasis trap. Drops the Robo indeed. It's got 3 gases. Uh, this looks very, very good for Blood Milan. This is exactly how I would play it too. And Cell cannot really move out until he has a crap ton of bio units. Because if you attack into a guy with 6 or 8 gateways with charge, if you get swarmed by like 15 to 20 zealots, obviously your life is over. But if you s sit back forever, you're going to run into Colossus, Disruptors, maybe Storm. There's not really a, uh, a great option here for Cell. I think the best thing that a Canadian Terran can do is just sit back, defend. I don't think that's what he's going to do. Does he even know that he's playing against Phoenix Zealot? He hasn't seen anything in forever. Okay, Cell throws down a scan. Sees a Robo, sees one of the two gases being taken. Does not really tell him a whole lot, but I think staying home is the right choice, man. If Cell runs to the other side of the map, he will get absolutely gobbled up by all these Zealots. It's 14 right now, but it could be 25 at that point. And then you, you lose the game, so you may as well just play from behind. Kind of try to turn it into a little macro game. Need more mines. I do like Widow Mines indeed. The only problem with Widow Mines here is that by the time you get a bunch of mines out to deal with the Zealots, then it's not really about the Zealots anymore. It should already be about the Colossus. Like, I think Blood Milan had plenty of time indeed to get another gas, get a second Robo and a Robo Bay, which is what he's doing right now. I think he could have done that a little bit earlier, not a lot earlier to play it safe, but just a little bit earlier. But that's kind of the problem with going into Widow Mines now. Mines are going to be good against the Zealots, but not so good against Colossus. Yeah. I'm done with the tournament, Fiont. I don't really need any updates anymore. Ooh. Oracle flies into a Widow Mine, so a little victory for the Canadian Terran. I loved updates, obviously, when Reyna was playing, since he's literally here, but right now uh, I'm done with it. I haven't seen Chad this spicy in a long time. I don't think Chad is spicy at all. This is a hype of an upper three Zelda best of five. That's what it is. We've got five Zelda's in the main base. This is obviously a sweet play by Blood Milan, who's got money in the bank. He's got four bases. This is not an all-in, guys. The man is transitioning behind all of this. There is some lag. Who is the lag? Who is lagging? Game paused. Someone was lagging. I don't think it's me. I have dropped zero frames. Stream seems stable. I'm going to assume it was Blood Milan. Yes, it is Blood Milan. When in doubt, this is German internet. Yes. Fascinating. Richest country in Europe, but probably the worst internet of at least any of the rich countries. I don't know what Germany spends all their money on, because the streets are always filthy. Public transport is a disaster. Their roads, other than the Autobahn, are not in the greatest state. What does Germany spend their money on? Mm -hmm. You want to fight me over that statement, Troy Stott? It is a fact, mate. And it's not even close. I think Germany is like the fifth biggest economy in the world. And it's definitely by far and away the biggest in Europe. Obviously, this is not an, uh, a hold that's doable for Cell, guys. He was just a little bit too far behind after the early game. Blood Milan had units for days, money for days, bases for days. And like I said, it wasn't even an all-in because he's got Colossus 2 on the way. GG gets called. And Blood Milan, our German, Protoss, down 0-1, has turned things around successfully. Now taking the 2-1 lead in this best of five. It does really make you wonder, did Cell have to do that little silly Marine all-in on Moondance? Kind of felt that he gave away a lot of momentum with that one. It was bad timing for the lag, but 
Honestly, guys, that game was pretty much over. Uh, it did not change anything. It did not change the outcome of the game. It's obviously frustrating, but that game was over. Mm. If game four between these two will be played on inside and out. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can. Uh, I think that... Uh, I don't know, like, if Cell wants to move out, he had to move out immediately, even before uh, Steam was done. He just had to go, basically, with a handful of Marines before Charge would be done. The moment that Charge is done, I don't think he could move out anymore because he doesn't have enough bio units. The tanks are good against, like, Phoenix Colossus, but not very good against Phoenix Zealot, right? Unless you go super quickly. Yep. Unfortunately for Cell, he didn't. Uh, go, go. Sorry, guys. Just did not quite have the right amount of units. It's a big map. On a smaller map, he could have moved out. I think with the first 8 to 10 units right after the Hellion drop. And that would be problematic for the Protoss to deal with. But on a map as big as Tropical Sacrifice, uh, Charge will pretty much always be done. Oh. I know. They are telling me I'm the host. I'm like, guys, I know. I'm just double checking to make sure that you are ready. Like they told me they were ready. But obviously whenever you all tap, sometimes if they are waiting oh shit. No, 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 no. Alright. We have to rehost. I'm also player. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, okay. GG. I took the one lead. I could definitely win this one. I can't win a lot of games, guys, but I can win this one. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Sorry. All right, now Upper 3 needs a sec. So before he was ready, then he said he was extra ready. Then we started the game, and now he needs a sec. When can we get ready to play in the BVB? It's hard to find a good opponent for me. Maybe uh, there will be a special anniversary edition one day where maybe I can get the rhino to cast or one of the children to cast or a Spanish goat and sly talents together and maybe then I'll play. That could be kind of fun. Roddy vs. Bumps. Uh, the idea is to make it a fun series and it needs to be close and unpredictable bumps. So that's not an option. Maybe that Romanian kid. Me against Cuckoo is also just not close enough. Uh, I mean, if Cuckoo is losing to F1 drivers, how is he going to have a good time against me? Hello, Goblin. The score is 2-1 to one in favor of Blood Milan. And we are now hopping into game four. Obviously, feel free to start videoing with the uh, disc. Get everything ready. Channel ready stream. What's the channel in game? Well, you've left the warm nest of Team Ruddy for so long. Oh my god. Now they are both Terran? Jeez Louise, this is the last time I get these 5k nerds involved. What a disaster. <laughs> Just kidding. Third time is the charm, guys. The third time is the charm. Go, go. <laughs> Protoss check, Terran check. Cell says go. I'm just gonna assume that Blood Milan is ready. If he's not ready, we'll host it again. We can do this all night, baby. <laughs> like a presidential debate, a lot of time is passing when nothing is actually happening. To be fair, some of these presidential debates that I've watched over the last 10 years, they were pretty spicy. They had some good one-liners in them. I thought this tournament was supposed to be for the big brains. It was, but then we got Cuckoo involved and I realized that we lost all credibility. So from that point on, literally anyone was welcome. Round four, fight! In the top right side of Inside and Out on match point, about to win. I think the biggest prize of his StarCraft 2 career so far. The man that we followed for a long, long time. I like covering his games in the first round of the weekly. We started casting him and he was 3,700 MMR. He has now made it all the way up to 5.1k. The man loves Showtime and tries to be a little Showtime. This is Blood Milan. 
This is the first of four best of fives, guys, so plenty of StarCraft to come after this one. In the bottom left side of Inside and Out, we are looking at the main base of the community, Hero. The man who has made all of our streams a much more pleasant and better place. This is Upper Tree. I have to admit, I kind of missed the Zelda part. Never thought I would say it, guys, but Upper Tree... You kind of feel... Oh, Upper Tree what? Now, I never understood the nickname. I was so confused. Like, I actually met Cell a very long time ago through uh, Miss Magitek back then. I don't know if you guys remember Miss Magitek. She used to stream StarCraft. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's my friend, Upper Tree Zelda. And I was so confused. I was like, what is an Upper Tree Zelda? Like, what is that? And she's like, oh, it's Cell. He's Canadian. He's really nice. <laughs> and that's the first time I ever heard of uh, Cell. I was like, such a weird name. But now that he's no longer Upper Tree Zelda and he's just Upper Tree. I miss the Zelda. <laughs> I think we need to put something behind it again. Something related to politics. <laughs> Still a better... Oh, it's... Uh, I'm totally fine with this rename. Vanya into Radata is indeed one of the saddest name changes that... Uh, not just the Starcraft scene, but any scene has ever seen. It's one of these things where Vanya should have really reached out to like two or three non-Russians. And he's like, hey man, do you guys think Vanya is a cool name? And literally all of us would have been like, yeah, Vanya is pretty cool, man. He probably just discussed this with like a Russian high school friend. And they're like, yeah, you should be Ratata. It's cool. It's like, no, that's not cool at all, guys. Vanya is way cooler. Can someone tell me the first three maps I can make? The first map was Data C, Upper Tree 1. Second match was Mundance, uh, Blood Milan 1. Third match was Tropical Sacrifice, Blood Milan 1. We've got our first uh, straight up Twilight Council opening of the series. And I think Cell's also doing something that I just like a little bit more. We are no longer making things overly complicated in the early game. We're just gonna get a handful of Marines out. We're even dropping a depot. Okay. Whoa, quick Dark Shrine. Super quick Dark Shrine. Like a Dark Shrine can be pretty good. Is that. Okay, the Adept is gonna just shade into the main base. Cell should not really lose anything here. Won't lose anything. Hmm. I feel like this should be good for Cell. The Protoss already has very few units whenever they go Dark Shrine. Now we lost an adept. Ooh, cheeky. The goblin pylon. Actually, the poppy pylon. Goblin stole it from poppy. But we can all just pretend it's the goblin pylon. And poppy stole it from fear dragon, who showed it to Australia. <laughs> Technically, the fear dragon pylon, guys. The only thing is that fear dragon didn't use it for warpins. Fear dragon used it to start building cannons here and then here. That, that means that he's still three screens away from the main base, but Ravi's like, that's a great cannon spot. I know, I said it's the Fear Dragon spot, but you found it for the wrong reasons. Anyway, guys, Dark Shrine is done. The Dark Shrine is done. We have 68 energy on the main orbital command. Does Cell see the warp in? Cell does not see the warp in. Will Cell drop the mule? If he drops the mule right now, it all ends. And even if he doesn't drop them... Okay, maybe we can raise the depot. Cell! Cell is saving scans. Raise, 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 raise the depot! Cell! <laughs> Why don't you know? <laughs> Why do you raise it now? Two Dark Templars in the main base. Okay, we're gonna throw down a scan. Honestly, a tough fight for the tank. And the Dark Templars are... No! The tank is shooting at the SCV. What is happening over here? I know there is a fight on the other side of the map. One of the two Dark Templars died. The tank does have one kill. And that's the SCV. Oh, so. Alright, Dark Templar comes back for round two. We do have another scan saved up. The SCVs are not quite doing anything yet. I don't know if that's a kill. If Blood Milan runs it away immediately, it's not a kill. <laughs> scan number two does also not kill the Dark Templar. <laughs> oh, that's good, toch niet. 43 probes against 16 SCVs, and the uh, Dark Templar comes back for round three. And Blood Milan does take a very ugly fight on the other side of the map. That's a super ugly fight. The tank kills everything. I don't think there is battery overcharge anymore. I mean, at this point, Cell may as well just rally all the SVs to the other side of the map. What on earth is happening? This Dark Templar has 10 kills, but it feels like it's 27. 
We do have a couple of extra boys showing up. Do we have another overcharge? Yes, we do have another overcharge. Oh my goodness. He dropped the mule! Cell just dropped the mule! <laughs> Cell's like, fuck it, I'm done scanning! I wanna get a turret on the other side of the map. I'm afraid it's all over, guys. Oh man, so actually, you looked really good in the macro game in game one. And it really does feel. Seems like we had a Liberator in the main base. This DT has ended the hopes and dreams. Of up three Zelda as another overcharge has been activated and that will do it for our first best of five of the day Congratulations to blood Milan who gets a three to one victory on the board and a couple of fun games I think that gave us a good giggle Well done. Well done to the German Protoss Did not expect that after the first game guys because that first game I technically felt that blood Milan had a good setup but still really brought it back with just some great multitasking and Nice drops into the main base, nice transitions. I was like, hmm, maybe so is the stronger player. Well, I think we definitely, yeah. I definitely think we can say that we lost some momentum with the Marine rush in game two. He goes too early, he needs to bank up a few more Marines. And the last game, I think we can kind of all agree that that was not optimal defense against the DTs. We don't do any player bashing in the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. We're all about having fun. But yeah, that was suboptimal, as the Germans would say. You're shaking. Well done, mate. Congrats. Congrats on your 60 well-earned dollars. And uh, I think fun series. Even though we had a couple of short games, I still really enjoyed watching this one. Congratulations, amigo.